is Math 152. We are going to take a look at Section 2.2. Uh, this is the second part of the lecture for 2.2. And what we're going to do is uh, build on this idea of cross-sections uh, to get volumes. And we're going to talk about volumes after we do a rotation. So if I have the equation y equals square root of x, it's like this. And it's going to run from 0 to 4, so it gets out to 4. Notice this would be the point 0.42. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this shape around the x-axis. So there's my x-axis. So notice if I rotate this shape around that x-axis, it gives me this, uh, this shape right here that looks like, um, looks like a cone, but these are curved, right? Because these are, these are, uh, this shape was curved. It wasn't a straight line. So what I have is a collection of cross-sections of circles, right? according to this shape. So if I think about my cross section, it's a circle and it has a certain radius. And that radius, like here's here's a cross section, you know, here's a circle right here. That radius is this equation, y equals x squared. So my uh, square root of x, sorry. So I'm, I know my radius is square root of x. Well, um, if that's the radius, what I want to, is a collection of areas to find that volume, just like we're doing, you know, it's just a cross section. So if that's the radius, area of a circle is pi r squared, so pi times that squared, that should give me pi x. That's my area. Great, so I'm set up to set my interval, uh, my integral. Notice I'm looking at my changes in x. Everything's relative to x. So I went from 0 to 4, and uh, there's my area times my change in x. Great, so if I work on this then, I am going to pull out that pi, do that integral, and uh, so now evaluate that. I've got uh, pi times a half times 4 squared minus, you know, 0 squared, so it's nothing. So that's 16, 8, 8 pi, and that would be units cubed. So I notice that that is 8 pi. That would be the volume of this shape. Um, I could also do this, like, let's say I wanted the same shape, but I only wanted to go from 1 to 4. So I would get kind of this, this truncated looking shape like this. Same idea. I'd, I'd have my same area. It's just I'd run my interval uh, from 1 to 4 instead of from 0 to 4. Notice I end up like this. And then I have to pay a little more attention uh, to it because then I have to go 4 squared minus 1 squared. All right, great setup, that sort of thing. So that was rotated around the x-axis. What if I had the same shape? But now I'm going to rotate it around the, uh, the y-axis. And what, what I'm going to do, though, on it is I'm going to do this. And this will be specified, but I'm going to do it like in the section between the uh the shape the curve and the y-axis so notice before i was doing this part in here and then i rotated it now i'm doing this part and i'm rotating it this way so what i get is this kind of like like cone looking thing i don't know you know those things that you you run coins around and they go down in the middle it looks like one of those so now uh notice i'm doing it relative to y right? Like I'm pushing back to the y-axis. So as I think about that, um, this would be solid though. There's no hole in there. It's just like a flute type shape. So as I do that, this is solved for x. I'm going to need it solved for y. I'm going to need it solved for x in order to do this because I want to be relative to y. So um, square both sides. So x equals y squared. So if I think about the cross section of this, these circles that are in here, this distance is y squared. So the area then is pi times radius squared. So the, the area is y to the fourth uh, pi. So my integral, and notice that I'm looking at y values. So I'm going to go from 0 to 2 of pi times y to the fourth relative to y. Okay, same idea. Take that pi out of there. Plug in my 2, and I get uh, 32 pi over 5. And that's units cubed as well. So 
I can do this relative to the x-axis. If that's my shape, then that's my kind of solid that's getting rotated around. Or I could do it relative to the y-axis. And in this case, that part in there is getting spun around. So let's, uh, let's look at a couple couple more of these. This one's kind of kind of clever. So this shape is going to look something like this. Parabola. It's got this vertex at 1, 1. And if we rotate this about the x-axis, notice it looks... It's a solid that looks like that. And these cross-sections are circles. And the radius is given to us. So the radius is x minus 1 squared plus 1. So remember what we want, though, is the area of these circles. So the area is pi times that radius squared. And we'll be a little clever about this. We don't need to multiply this out. Uh, I'm running my integral from negative 1 to 3 of my area relative to x. Pi is going to come out just that constant. OK, so I'm not going to multiply out this inside, but I'm going to square it. Remember, something squared means times itself. So it's the first thing squared. Squared squared is the fourth power. Plus, there'd be two of these, plus that squared. And uh, what's kind of nice about this is like that x minus 1, that doesn't have, you know, I don't have to chain out of that. Like it's it's derivative. Like if I did a substitution right now, u equals x minus 1, uh, du would be dx. So I could think of this as u to the fourth plus 2u squared plus 1. So I'm just going to keep that x minus 1 in mind then and just say this would be 1 fifth x minus 1 to the fifth plus 2 thirds. That's running from 3 to negative 1. And then I know how to evaluate that. I shove that in there, and I get 412.15 times pi. And that's units. All right, so think about this setup and how we did this relative to x. One note I want to make, uh, if I'm doing it relative to x, it's solved for, for y, right? Like, this is in terms of x. And if I'm doing it relative to y, this is in terms of y. It's solved solved for x uh, for me to use it, depending on what direction I'm going. So here's my shape, uh, y equals 4x squared. And I want to rotate, I'm going to um, rotate this around y. So this is the area that I'm looking for. That's a 2. I'm going to rotate it this way. It's a solid. So if I think about my cross section, I've got some radii. And uh, since I'm relative to y, I want it in terms of y. I want it to solve for x. So I'm going to solve this for x. So uh, divide both sides by 4. And then um, if I want, I could square root it, right? So x is the square root of y over 2. Uh, but what's going to happen is if that's the radius, remember area is pi times the radius squared. I'm just going to square it again <laughs> to get this part. So the area is pi times this thing squared, which is that, y over 4. So I've got my integral of pi times y over 4 relative to y. But notice I'm not running from 0 to 2. I'm, I'm running relative to y. So 0, 2, well, let's see. If I plug a, a 2 into this, 4, 4, 4 times 4, 16. So this goes up to 16, right? This is the point 2. 16 and I'm running it in the y direction. All right, the pi and the 4 can can come out. Those are constants. And uh you know how to do the rest of that. You end up with 32 pi. I'm going to take that same shape, same bound, but I'm going to rotate it over over x. So this part do get that shape that looks like that so if i think about the cross sections of these are circles 
So the area is pi times the radius squared. So notice that the 4 is getting squared in there as well, right? So this would be 16 pi x to the fourth. So if I set this up, uh, this one is running from 0 to 2 because it's relative to x. That 16 pi is a constant. I can pull it on out of there, do my integral. And since this is a zero, I don't have to worry about the subtraction part. Plug in my two, this becomes a five. All right, give those problems a try. Take your time uh, setting them up. Post questions, send me questions via the messages.